we, we think of ourselves as homo sapiens, but uh, with, the in, with the advent of artificial intelligence, we may expect to become robo sapiens. Specifically, what I mean is the introduction of, uh, of small robots to be implanted in the human brain um, to augment their mental capabilities will, uh, will represent the next stage of evolution um, in which we go from being fully bio from exclusively biological creatures to a mix of biological and artificial. The relationship between artificial intelligence and economics is a fundamental one. So, as with the introduction of any new technology, economic forces will dictate the timing of its adoption and the sectors in which it will be adopted. Um, we can expect artificial intelligence to have a general, a, a, a very strong general effect increasing productivity um, in some sectors more than others. Um, it will transform the way the labor market's organized, it will wipe out whole sectors of the economy, it will create entirely new sectors, and it should incre induce increases in longevity um, that will affect the healthcare and many other sectors. Well, in the, in the next few years already, we can expect things like driverless cars and uh, robots doing household chores and uh, working in service industries. A little further down the road, we can expect a brain augmentation, which is the implant of uh, robotic um, little robots in, inside our brains. Um, in the longer term future, we can expect very big increases in the 50, say 50 year range, very large increases in longevity. Um, can be expected from, uh, from artificially, artificial intelligence technologies. Um, furthermore, uh, we might see uh, whole brain emulation, which is the uploading of our entire consciousness onto other platforms, non-biological platforms. And can it be dangerous in an economic sense? Um, well, whole sectors will be of the economy will be wiped down and many people will see their standard of living go down, though we expect the average standard of living to increase due to increase in productivity. But then what can be the role of humans in the economy? Well, human, the economic logic dictates that a resource such as human labor will never go unutilized. So humans will do, typically this means that the, 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 the principle of comparative advantage which governs such relationships would typically stipulate that humans would do the things they're relatively good at. In this case it would mean humans would do things they're relatively not so bad at. Um, an ironic outcome is predicted, um, this is referred to as Moravec's paradox, and it's based on the idea that it's easier to emulate um, cognitively sophisticated functions with artificial agents than, uh, than, than um, uh, sensory motor functions. And that means humans will be relatively good at things such as gardening, artistry, craftsmanship, etc., and not so good at high-level analysis, which will, where we'll be replaced. Will artificial intelligence make people happier? Well, this is a very interesting question. So, artificial technologies have not made people happier so far. I'm thinking of pharmacological um, products, um, drugs to increase, improve mood, improve emotional state. They have temporary effects and do not create lasting happiness. Um, there's an indirect channel whereby artificial intelligence could um, increase happiness potentially, and that is through increasing the standard of living. However, economic history is clear on this point. Um, over the past couple of centuries, there have been huge increases in the, in the material standard of living and income per person, and zero increase in happiness. Indeed, income inequality is associated with less happiness. So that if, in the early stages of the introduction of artificial intelligence, um, some people have better access than others, great inequalities can result and that would actually lower average happiness.